You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask Drone You. As always, my name is Paul. And I'm Rob. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate it very much. We know you have a lot of options, and especially nowadays. Seems like there's more and more drone podcasts. So thank you for being with us. Thank you very much. Today is talking about understanding the decisions to make before the ban. I know the ban keeps coming up. In fact, uh, people have even tweeted, say DJI ban one more time. And then they have like a bunch of angry emojis. And I totally understand the vibe and the feeling, um, but people still have questions. And one of those questions is what to get before the ban, um, assuming that the ban does go through. Um, we've got a couple of questions in our queue right now just about various strategic questions regarding how to go about the ban. And and I, and I just want to say this really quick. I think it's really important. This ban will shake up the industry, but there's a lot of people that it will shake out. And that means that there's an opportunity for those of you who are willing to stay steady, stay strong, and build those client relationships. So I just wanna say that. Before we get into today's question, this is coming out right around Black Friday. We have launched some of the coolest, newest courses to date this year. We've updated our core classes. We've added on our in-person training and our in-person experiences. 2026 will be the year of the most trainings that we've ever done when it comes to enterprise, but also plus our consumer trainings. It's gonna give you the opportunity to give you footage that you've always wanted to capture, learn the formulas to go about these jobs and get the apprenticeship and the experience that you need to go out there and sell yourself too. So take advantage of our Black Friday deals while you can. In-person trainings will be 30% off. Memberships, they're back, are 50% off. So if you wanna get in and get access to everything to figure out exactly the road that you wanna take with your drone, well, now is the time to do it. So check it out, droneyoublackfriday.com. Don't get no easier than that. Gentlemen, thank you so much for what you do. Quick question in connection with all the bans and NDAA talk. Looking to jump into the business this year and looking to do telecom inspections. And I see people using the uh, Enterprise drone, the 3E, the 4E. And I'm wondering, is there any reason why uh, I couldn't use the T? Could I successfully photograph, map a telecom tower? You know, something close range like that. In particular, that's what I'm looking into is a telecom inspection. So, yeah, I know you guys have mentioned find something, find a niche, and master it but i feel like i could do a couple things simultaneously and i definitely would be down with something involving thermal and eventually lidar but that's down the road but um anyway yeah is there any reason why i couldn't get a t instead of an e or should i just go for an e if i'm going to be doing telecom inspections thanks for your time all right thank you very very much glenn thank you for the question great question and funny enough it's a question we've been getting a lot like a yeah, lot, a lot, surprisingly. Yeah. Telecoms are back, or maybe they just never left. Well, and I'm talking specifically about, can I get the T? And I think people just get really excited about being able to be able to do thermal. Yes. They think that, and maybe there is, but they think that there's just potentially a lot of opportunity that's maybe a little more untapped in that world. So I don't know if you I, could speak to that. I, I think that there is opportunity that is untapped when it comes to thermal. Um, you know, we see a lot of thermal usage in public safety, specifically firefighting. Mm. Um, we see uh, thermal being used by law enforcement for uh, search and rescue, search and recovery. Um, after a large accident, we've seen um, there was actually a story that I want to put in the news show for next week about a child that was found in a cornfield using thermal. It so is, those are all those are all kind of drone as a first responder sort of scenarios. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what about no just your average that. consumer? Yeah, that gives good great question. You're getting there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was getting there. I was getting there. <laughs> I, now, I think for the average consumer, um, you've got commercial roof inspections. You've got power line inspections if they're contracted out, which they are contracted out. Uh, that's something I need to tell you about that Brandon brought to the table, a utility in Denver. Um, they are wanting that. But if you're doing purely telecom inspections, the chances of needing thermal are actually uh, near zero. Of all the companies that we've worked with personally, none of them are asking for thermal photos. Um, 
But if you've got telecoms that are on power lines and the telecom is tied into the the power generation company, distribution or transmission company, they could want thermal photos. But to be really honest and frank, the chances of you needing thermal for telecom inspections is like near zero. There could be one off. So, you know, I don't want to sit here and say it's an absolute. Or maybe you could find a way to upsell yeah. value, right? Yes. If there's a problem area and they need to figure out what the problem is, it's a very quick way to determine where problems are. Because remember, with electronics, when things break, they heat up. So it, it, it's pretty easy. It's kind of uh, like that inflammation in your body. Yes. It heats up. Anyways, okay, go on. Yep. That was dumb. But no, seriously, when it comes back to these inspections, even when it comes to doing inspections on poles, whether they're power or telecom, they're, you know, even the need for them being mapped is being challenged. Rob and I were at a conference uh, in September where a lot of uh, a lot of these players were there. And it's actually really interesting because these people are sick and tired of paying for expensive software. They're sick and tired of going through thousands of photos. And so oftentimes we ask the question, well, are you even using the data to do the map or do you simply just store the data and if a problem becomes present, you go back and then create the map so you're not even doing the processing? And we heard a lot of that. We heard a lot of, you know, that's not even... Um, or using AI to go through the photos to look for things. Yes. Uh-huh. They are paying for that. Uh-huh. Right. But the whole processing of data is even going down. So with thermal imagery, it's even more difficult to process that data. We actually had um, someone that we were talking to in Boston who was using thermal imagery. But that was actually for um, doing climate inspections, meaning were the buildings still LEAP certified? Were they still, um, you know, uh, what's it, not leaking air, et cetera? But anyway, long story short is I think the answer to your question is if you feel the need to get a 4T, go get a 4T. Just know that the 4E and the 4T have different cameras on them. And one of them has a global shutter and one of them doesn't. So i.e. the T does not. Yeah. So it's really important. Um, now you can map without a global shutter. It just takes a lot longer and it's more expensive and doing volume is very difficult. So But to be clear, you can still get a quality map with it. It's just gonna be not nearly as efficient. Yeah. That's would, kind of the clarifier. Yeah. And I always go back to that whole when we compared the Phantom 4 Pro against the Parrot Anafi AI, and it was 100 photos in both data sets. And the Phantom 4 Pro took 26 minutes to process, and it took two and a half hours for the Anafi AI to process. And the only difference was literally a mechanical shutter. So Wes talked about the Anafi AI and he, some of the roofing stuff. Really? Mm. Not he was not happy. <laughs> I want to try the new UKR. People say mm. that it's got more power and thrust, but Parrot is known. How much does that matter? I mean, it matters a lot. Especially, power and thrust. You're not in a race. No, but up here at altitude, you need more power and thrust anyway because the air is thinner, so the motor has to spin faster to create the same amount of lift that you would get down in San Diego. Right, but the end purpose of that is to get more time from your battery or like who cares no no no, no. like if you got a 10 uh, okay so when we tested the parrot anafi ai down mm -hmm. at the lfra for esi engineering and it was a 10 mile an hour wind and that thing lasted like 10 minutes because it didn't have the power and thrust to like negate the wind okay so i mean i think that there are very real issues with that but going back to this this um person's question which by the way thank you for the question if you have one Ask AskDroneU.com because AI is not there yet. I'm being able to answer these detailed questions. Um, but telecoms typically are not going to use thermal. It could open up other opportunities. You know, I noticed the guy said, I'm willing, I'm starting to make a big investment. Seven to $9,000 for a drone is not a big investment. You need, like, I, and I only say that because seven to nine grand might be a lot of money for a lot of people. And it is. It is. Yeah. Let's be real. But let's be real about opening businesses. People typically need 50 to a hundred to 200 K minimum to open up traditional businesses. Yeah. So, I mean, think about a bakery and how much equipment you need for a freaking bakery, you know? Sure. I mean, you can make those comparisons, but yeah, it is what it is. It is. I mean, I, I know we're making this quick. Have we, have we covered all of our, our bases with this one? It's pretty simple in my eyes. No, I agree. I think it's a pretty straightforward question and I think you answered it. It's like, yes, you can. Um, and it, I mean, could maybe kind of just the, put the bow on the question. You can map with the T. Yes. You can do inspections. Yes. Like cell tower inspections. You may or may not use the thermal very often. Correct. Right. Correct. The business. But you will have the option. Yes. <laughs> That's kind of. 
I don't think, though, in my personal opinion, that the option of the thermal is going to overcome the competitive advantage of the E. I think that is the that's the point right yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Because I always feel a little because I was like I we open the show with we get this question in our email box and our support emails, we get it a lot. And I'm always like, I don't want to tell somebody if you kind of have your heart set on this kind of path and and the, the potential for thermal, and then you you go and get the E because drone you said to get the E, and then you come across an opportunity to do thermal three months later. Damn drone, you told me to get the E. But at the same time, right now sitting here today, if you had to choose and you have an opportunity more than most probably to go get thermal work, you would choose the E. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Uh huh. So there you go. Yeah. You can get the T and you'll be fine. There's a lot more business opportunity for the E than the T, in my personal opinion. Yeah. And the people that I do know that are doing thermal inspections, they're all employees for utilities. And otherwise, I don't actually hear thermal being used very much. I know some commercial roof inspections, but it's it's rare. Think about Division 7. Division 7 didn't even use it anyway. No, no. And by the way, if you really, I mean, we have a... Uh, we have an M30 T. <laughs> if you want to buy it, yeah. <laughs> if you want to buy a thermal camera. Uh. Oh, but no, that's, I think it's really interesting. Um, and I totally understand why people are asking the question. It makes sense. And I think particularly when people are looking like, how can I make money in this business? And what, how do I increase my chances? And and this gentleman talked about, I know you guys said to find a niche and we, yes, we've said that, but we also understand that, you know, you might need to try two or three things and being good at more than one thing. We always, we also say those that can be really, really good at the technical side and the creative side have a vast advantage. So that kind of speaks a little bit against being too niche, right? It's mm-hmm. being, it's being, um, creating value in yourself by being more, uh, being able to do more, but you got to be able to do it well. That's like what we say about our courses. There's some, some of our competitors, they do good work. I don't really think any of them go as deep as drone you does. No. Right. And so you have to that's have kind of how you think about yeah. the, uh, the services that you're going to offer is think of it that way. So anyways, that's kind of my, two you got to have the experience to go deep because without the experience, you don't know what you don't know. Right. So that being said, I think we did answer this question. I but, think so. Um, you know, I don't want to beat it to death, but I think you'll find a lot more opportunity in just mapping and doing it at scale. The big thing that most people overlook, and this last thing I want to hit, is they'll hear everything that we just said and they'll still go with the T because they're like, well, I can still do mapping. I don't think people understand if it takes even your cloud processor 6, 9, 12, 15 hours to build a basic map, you're losing competitive advantage and you cannot do work at scale the scale and volume necessary to be successful. So think about that. Even with certain American drones that don't have global shutter cameras, a lot of people have given up on them because it takes so much longer to do the work that they just end up doing it the traditional way and the drone pilot ends up with no job anyway. So Yeah, and we know there are plenty of people out there a lot of well-meaning, smart people on YouTube and other places that will say of course you can map with this drone, but they're not looking at the big picture. Or the business case. Or the business case. Can you do it 1% of the time? Well, technically, yes, but we're not here to give you the technical yes. We're here to give you the raw dog, no bullshit answer. It is doable, just like there's a lot of videos. You can map with the Mini 4 Pro. Of course you can. <laughs> but no one's going to buy it. <laughs> but that's not the point, right? So you can. I can ride a bike from Colorado to Boston. I'd like to see I that. I can do that. He, the hair might grow back on the top of his head. Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> well, that's hope gonna, that helps. Yeah, that's going to do it for us today. A Black Friday sale. Check it out. Uh, with the more classes that you would take, the more you would understand this stuff. Um, and also, there's a reason that we don't have a lot of updated content on thermal. And it's because it's really the business case really isn't there as much. So that being said, thank you again for joining us. As always, if you have a question, ask DroneU.com. We'll see you next time.